Welcome. We're going to give our audience just a minute to get started. So I just want to thank everybody for joining. Um, welcome again. We'll get started in just one minute. Welcome to our virtual trade show. I'm Alan Ratcliffe, Regional Sales Director of CareStream Dental. I want to welcome you all to CareStream Dental's headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. We're just as disappointed as you when we read the announcement that the Inman Dental Meeting was canceled. As a healthcare organization, we understand the need to make tough decisions in response to the challenges we are facing. However, we use that disappointment to fuel digital innovation and with this, our very first virtual trade show. I'm excited to show you some of the great technologies CareStream Dental has to offer. Please feel free to ask questions today via chat, just as you would on the trade show before. We have to find creative ways to interact and carry on in today's climate. Today, you'll be hearing from our doctors, product specialists, and sales team, the CareStream Dental family. As if you were standing here in front of us at the Hinman, I'd like to ask you to become a part of our family. Thanks again. And truly, and I hope, I truly hope that you will make our first virtual trade show a great success. With that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Robert Polly. He's going to speak today about implant workflow. Little elbow. Nothing nice. Social, social distancing. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Robert Polly. I'm a dentist in the Atlanta area. Uh, so uh, thankful for Lisa Ashby and Ed Schiller uh, inviting me today to come uh, as well with their team, give you uh, my thoughts and uh, workflow specifications of the 3700 and the 8100, and really how I use digital Im imaging in my practice as a whole. Um, and I also like to take a moment just to say I hope you guys are enjoying yourself at your homes. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful time today uh, listening to our presentation and also stay safe. Uh, in my office, I've used the CareStream dental uh, equipment for quite some time. I have um, a 3D uh, scanner, which is the 8100. Uh, it allows me, it's a workhorse pretty much in my field, allowing me to take uh, dual arch scans for implant workflows. Uh, Anorexes, external bite wings if I have some sort of issue with um, tori. And then it lets me also to uh, just, just concentrate on a single quadrant. Uh, I, as well, I have uh, had the 3600 and, and now the 3700 as far as the intraoral scanners. And uh, pretty much the way this works in my office is I will use these. Uh, for various um, procedures, single unit crowns, fixed bridges, uh, single unit implants, implant bridges, uh, 
We do a lot now with uh, full mouth reconstruction or smile, uh, smile reconstructions where we will take a full arch scan, send it to our lab, uh, have a digital diagnostic workup, uh, and then from that we're pretty much planning uh, what our uh, finals will look like before we ever have to go in and touch a person's tooth or start thinking about planning uh, titanium. Uh, I'm just going to ask the team here, is everything okay with my voice? Can you guys hear? It's working okay? Awesome. Awesome. So with our column beam, um, going back to that, we will we'll use that for a, bit, a variety of reasons. We'll use that to treatment plan, especially in the implant arena. Uh, prior, uh, prior to surgery, uh, we can plan any type of regenerative procedures that are needed. We can look at our implant um, choice. We can virtually treatment plan uh, the implant length, the specific implant, uh, and uh, that gives us a ton of information before we start. Um, after I will uh, get my 3D scan, uh, at this stage, it's pretty much uh, a given that uh, if we're doing some sort of uh, reconstruction or single unit crowns, we're going to also go ahead and quickly grab a full arch intraoral scan. Uh, in my office, I also have XNAV technology, so if I'm doing some sort of uh, implant treatment planning, uh, I've stepped away from the static guides and pretty much can do just dynamic uh, navigation and then treatment planning now. So I will incorporate my uh, Dental 8100 and the CS3700, uh, export those and do treatment planning. Uh, I've also started treatment planning some with uh, DTX uh, Studio, so we have treatment planning where we can uh, incorporate all of our bone scans with our 3D, uh, our intraoral scans, and pretty much uh, do a prosthetic-driven treatment plan where we know uh, our prosthetics uh, before we start, then we can look at all the information from our home beam and internal scans, and we can see what kind of regenerative treatments we need uh, to get our implants in the specific area that we need them before we ever do any, any surgery. Our goal, especially in the implant arena, uh, is to place that implant in as safe bone as possible. Uh, allowing us to have a predictable outcome. Uh, other uses in my office for the infrared scanner, uh, we will use it for uh, aligner therapy. So we do clear correct cases uh, where we will do full arch scan uh, and able to send those uh, to clear correct through their pool. Uh, I'm a little older dentist. I've been practicing a long time, so it's a, it was hard for me to give up polyvinyl. Siloxane as my go-to impression material, uh, but it just seems like the more I use my scanner, the more now I just hate the fact that if a margin is really, really deep and I think I have to use polyvinyl, uh, you know, I hate to pull that out uh, and use it. But it's still available. I can still use it. Uh, drawbacks are, you know, you're, you, put it, you put that polyvinyl in, you got to wait five to seven minutes, take it out. If something's wrong, you got to take it again. Another great thing about the scanner is you're pretty much real time, real life. So when you're doing your scan, uh, you look at it. If there's a spot that you want to change, it's really easy to come back, cut it uh, right there, real time, and, and correct that. Uh, with the scan flow workflow, you'll hear me talk a little bit of here about CareStream. Then with their products, they have the 36 and 3700, and with those, uh, the software acquisition is a scan flow. So. Uh, case the CS scan, scan flow. With this this software, it allows us also to pretty much make adjustments on the fly uh, and then refine, uh, come back, and if we need to uh, make any uh, adjustments or change our margins, we can. Going back to the point where if we had a really deep uh, amalgam or a, a fracture below the gum line that we just can't get dry enough for our scanner. Uh, we can take a polyvinyl just in that little quad, in that small area of the crown, uh, and use what's called the hybrid workflow. Or we'll add an, add, a, add an, take an impression, uh, take an impression of our impression with the scanner, and we're still back on the digital workflow. 
for you who, for those of you who are uh, not familiar as well much with uh, intraoral scanning, just because you're taking a polyvinyl switch, uh, polyvinyl siloxane, or your final impression in your office, still doesn't mean you're not on a partial, partial digital workflow. Uh, because a lot of your labs are going to be scanning your, your impression and working on the uh, final restoration from there. You'll see uh, articles in, uh, in publications where you now we're seeing that uh, intraoral scanners are just, just more accurate uh, than your polyvinyl. Uh, the labs have gotten to the point now where uh, you know, they have uh, perfected that. They see that the digital is the way to go, so it's, it's cutting the cost for them. Uh, you, sometimes you'll even see that your uh, lab fees are less. Uh, you're not having to pay uh, for stock trays, polyvinyls, uh, siloxane, or whatever your final impression is. Uh, you're getting to save a lot of time because with the digital workflow, uh, as soon as you finish uh, your impression for the day, um, you write your prescription, scan your prescription into the patient's chart, and it's so easy just to export those uh, the, the lab prescription, any uh, additional photographs of the patient or photos um, of, of teeth or their occlusion, you can upload those right into your uh, uh, CS Connect, CareStream Connect portal, uh, and your lab will get that immediately. In about uh, larger cases, it may take as much as 35, 40 seconds, uh, short of smaller, smaller cases, not even that for it to upload and immediately you can see where it's transferred and then pretty soon you'll notice when you get ready to send your next case you'll see where that one's already been consulted with. So the labs have really jumped on board and are using this now. Uh, the 3700, uh, you'll hear Dr. Ferguson talk about this later in today's uh, program, but he'll mention a lot with uh, the shade match. That's pretty cool with shade matching with the new 3700. Uh, that uh, will get shade selection where it will show just like we would uh, in the past. Which you can uh, pick on, touch a part of the tooth, cervical, middle, incisal, and you'll get your shade. You can also uh, just pretty much take a shade report uh, and it'll show the whole, whole page and the whole range of uh, teeth shades in your quad. Got a couple of questions. Okay, so the question was, what is the field of view uh, that I might use for uh, an implant case? Uh, always when I'm planning um, my field of view, it's going to be the eight by nine with the with the uh, sorry with the uh, eighty one hundred. Uh, that that gives me a chance to see both the upper and lower arches and kind of treatment plan that as well. And going back. With that, I can then move my uh, uh, intraoral scan, uh, and, and in the CareStream software, you can also plan that with your prosthetic driven implant placement. Uh, so when you're placing your implant, you know that you're placing it in the best place for bone, but also uh, you got to be able to restore it when you place it. So that's where you want to get all these data sets together and working for you. Any other questions? I found that uh, one of the big, uh, big uh, advantages of digital dentistry with the scanners uh, is the chair time that I save. Uh, it's in my office, usually uh, the patient will come in, uh, we'll get their vital signs, uh, I'll anesthetize the area, any assistance will grab a quick algina of the uh, parts that we're working on or the quadrant that we're working on for the temporary. Uh, and then I'm free to go right after the anesthetic, I can move on to another patient. Um, the, uh, depending on what other procedure I'm doing, uh, the uh, assistant could then go ahead and take the scan of the patient's dentition. Uh, at that time, uh, I would come back, prepare, prepare the tooth, pack the cord, uh, and then I will take one cord out, and usually at this time I will evaluate the margins and then take my, I'll take the final impression once we cut out the single tooth. And then I'm done. Uh, if, if, if it works better for me to do the prep as soon as I get the anesthesia, then I can do that. I can leave and then they can get the uh, impressions. You'll find out that your assistants 
uh, can scan as well or, or better than you. So uh, let them be part of your uh, your workflow. Uh, you as a dentist are always going to get the final impression, but uh, they, they will be able to do a lot for you for that and give you some more chair time to work on other procedures. On the flip side, when you come back for the delivery appointment, I found that uh, now that I'm doing a full digital workflow, uh, my crowns appointments are much faster as far as seeing. Uh, most of the time, uh, my patients, especially if it's a single tooth, uh, single tooth crown, will only uh, would, would rather do that without anesthesia. So if they don't need anesthesia, the, the assistant will work with the tooth, get the crown off, clean everything up, try in the new crown, and uh, then take a uh, free cementation bite wing after they've uh, uh, done any interproximal adjusting. The wonderful thing is now that we're on the digital workflow, we have very minimal interproximal or occlusal adjustments needed. Be, how, it's amazing how quick that once I check in, make sure they either need or do not need anesthetic, uh, that the assistant will be tapping me and uh, ready for me to check the final instrument. So that's another great way of uh, a digital, digital dentistry to save you chair time. Um, you know, I think I touched on this a, a little bit earlier, but uh, one of the big things that I've found um, that we seem to have more cases of is when we're doing our digital smile uh, workups or virtual smile emulations, uh, where, where you will do a scan. Uh, if you've got full arch uh, veneers or crowns, uh, the labs are really uh, very uh, helpful now in that we can um, take the digital scan, send it off, uh, and have uh, our crowns designed. The patient gets to see that uh, design, and it's so much easier, I think, as well, as far as treatment planning. Uh, another thing that we're doing, if you're into, uh, if you're practicing implant dentistry now, or full arts dentistry, I've uh, been working with Stephen Balshi and uh, the CM Prosthetics, and we're able to now, for like a terminal dentition or an edentulous arch, uh, now in the past year I've done a few cases where it's been really exciting to uh, scan scan a full arch now of 3700, either edentulous or with terminal dentition. Uh, then the next step would be sending that to the uh, lab where we will have a digital design of the full mouth, uh, full arch uh, reconstruction uh, prosthetics. Uh, I will approve that. Uh, if we're going to place implants in this case, and that's the time that we will work with our software to place our implants in that uh, new prosthetics that are designed. Again, prosthetic driven implant planning, so we can plan our implants to be in the most ideal uh, place for the uh, full arch. Uh, provisional and the full arch final. Uh, that will uh, let us put, uh, place it where we can uh, maximize the strength of that restoration. Uh, it's been exciting to have done a, uh, a few cases in which I've just stopped with maxillary dentures on, on patients, but it's been uh, a full arch scan, uh, so with no alginate, uh, no impression material, just digital scans and having a wonderful fit. Any other notes? Question was, do I do any follow-up CBCT uh, after implant placement? Uh, I, I have found, now that I used uh, my uh, dynamic guided XNAV um, treatment plan, I take less uh, post-ops than I used to. But the wonderful thing with the uh, CareStream uh, Dental 8100, it has the uh, ability to just select a uh, small site, uh, and then you can decrease the, the, the radiation, increase the speed at which it takes it. So you can take a really quick shot just to make sure if there's a case that you need to really uh, check, you can make sure your final placement is where you want it. So there's no uh, question coming along 
later in the year, later on down the road, you've been able to deal with it that day uh, and uh, look at it and make sure that you love your uh, alignment and treatment plan. Okay, so uh, the question was uh, briefly discuss the edentulous and fully uh, full mouth um, uh, 3700 uh, intraoral scan workflow. Uh, you, in this case, let me talk a couple of things about the, my, my thoughts with intraoral scan. Going back to the beginning, I still say, and I've always told the, my tissue dental reps, whatever you tell. Uh, my, my colleagues who are looking, yeah, it's a fast, uh, it's a great arm of peace farm material, but you still, it's, it's so nice and fast that there's no reason for you not to take a full arch, whether you're doing a single tooth or uh, a full arch impression. Get a full arch uh, scan if you're doing a single, it might take you a minute and a half longer. That way the lab's going to nail down your clue. And go slow. Another thing you'll be, and you'll see I've been on. Uh, trade show floors and you talk about how fast you can scan. Yeah, that's great, but it's fast, it's fast. It's the Ferrari versus the uh, Porsche. They're both really, really fast. Uh, these cameras are fast, but you just need to slow down to get the details. When we start, when I started looking at full arch scans uh, and uh, either edentulous or with terminal dentition, it's always a little harder to capture the palate. Uh, in your edentulous areas, and what you have to make sure you do there is just go slow and then kind of stay really close to the tissue. If, if you'll notice there's a focal point, I think it's about 13 millimeters on these, these cameras, that if you get outside that, you'll lose, you, you, it loses your, um, your um, tissue to capture. So when you're, capturing, when you're moving across the palate, just stay, uh, you know, a uniform distance away, pretty close to the palate, and you'll have to kind of follow the curve. Get as much uh, retraction as you can. A great, uh, great piece of uh, equipment that CareStream uh, now distributes as well as this uh, piece of uh, equipment called the ScanMate. Uh, it's really nice. It's non-reflective. We'll show it later when we do the full arch scan on, on, on a volunteer for us today. Thanks. But uh, that's, that's, that does a couple things. It's nice. It's non-reflective. It'll retract. And uh, thank you. Uh, it'll retract for you, and it's really soft, so I use it for every time that we're using the scanner for intraoral crown, but I also use it when I'm doing implant surgery because it's really nice, soft, and you can use it to reflect your soft tissue. Uh, the question was, am I often asked about radiation exposure uh, when we're taking uh, 3D scans or, or full mounts or panorex for that matter? Uh, it seems like lately, in the last few years, I have had less uh, questions about that at all. I, I think probably the public in this day and age uh, is very uh, educated uh, through the web and the internet. But if I had a patient that was concerned, one of the, uh, I can quote them and show them literature. We're now with the digital radiography, we're really decreasing the exposure. Uh, it's to the point now where we're having literature uh, Sprout up that uh, really and truly they're not recommending uh, lead aprons for some of these digital radio dress because we're they're so fast and so little little radiation. Uh, the question was uh, asked: What's the value of a, a scanner uh, or a digital workflow in my office? In, in 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 my case, I think it's uh, brought about a, a lot of value uh, as far as uh, giving me more product productivity with uh, chair time, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's also, uh, anytime we're dealing with di digital data, it's uh, it's captured and it's still there. So, uh, it, where a conventional uh, polyvinyl or alginate is, has a limited lifespan, uh, the digital data is there. If your patient uh, breaks a crown, all you have to do is uh, get right back into your data set. Uh, you can send it off and have another crown made. Uh, a lot of times what will happen in my office is also we will work uh, on, on two different areas. Uh, one, one quadrant lower left, the next time the crown in the upper right. Well, we've already got the data set from the previous crown. All we have to do is go back, uh, cut and 
delete the old crown prep, scan in the new crown that was taken, and then turn around and go back and we're going to scan the prep for the day. So again, that's time saving. The staff is on board. Uh, they see the uh, uh, the benefit, uh, the accuracy, and the speed. As 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 well as me, though, it takes a little while to implement this, uh, and your staff will, uh, you know, at first make questions, but you'll see that they will come around. And then finally, one of the biggest things is your patients. They see all this going on uh, out in the community on the internet, and then they see it in your office. And when they see that you are taking steps to kind of stay up with uh, technology, keep updated as much as you can, uh, they they see a value in that with you with your dental practice. Uh, just about to wrap up this section, thanks again, uh, CareStream Dental, for having me. Uh, you guys, if anyone has any uh, questions from me, I know they've been able to take them on Facebook as well, but if you'd like, you can reach me at, uh, at my office. Uh, it's office at drpolly.com is the website, uh, office at drpolly.com. Uh, my email is uh, drpolly at live.com. Love to help you with any questions that you might have. Uh, again, stay safe in this day and age, in these next upcoming weeks, and may we all pass through this healthy and as quickly as possible. Thanks.